So I'm like now laying on my side on the bed and he had like this like, get the hell down. And I'm like, oh yes sir, whatever you say daddy. And he's like, that's right you little slut, get down. I'm gonna barf love and alien knowledge directly into your soul. Hi, I'm Fifi Dosh, and this is the time a robot monster from Between Dimensions healed my childhood trauma. I have a friend in LA, we both grew up in the same little town in South Dakota. My buddy is making ayahuasca on my stove, and he just, he's like, it's like he's on the Great British Baking Show. He's just jolly, my buddy already kind of looks like Santa Claus, he's like straining drugs through a cheesecloth, it's like, it looks like Mary Berry's gonna walk in at any second and be like, oh, well worth the calories. I know you're supposed to like, fast and not swear for a week and like only eat vegan food so you fart out all your impurities or whatever. We didn't do any of that. So anyway, he makes it and we drink it down and ayahuasca is the worst tasting thing ever. Imagine drinking like a whole liter of mud and perfume. It just, it sucks so bad. I want to throw up right away, but my buddy is like, hold it in, hold it in, dude. And eventually I can't hold it in anymore. I gotta puke, and so does he. And I have one toilet for two people on drugs. I don't know if you've ever thrown up into the same toilet as a friend of yours as they're throwing up, but it's a very intimate experience. So we puke all that up, when all of a sudden this big face appears in my ceiling. On mushrooms, you'll be like, hey, my ceiling looks like a face. On ayahuasca, it was more like, a face entered the room. I remember after the first time I did it, I remember telling people like, dude, it makes mushrooms feel mundane. I'm lying on my bed and I'm tripping and all of a sudden these little like, tinkery little metallic monstery things, they look like little elves, they appear in front of me and they start making sounds. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like, they want me to make noise too. So I'm just look at them and I'm like, and this big red cone just shoots out of my mouth and it has like little blue atoms swirling around. So we screw around on that and we make some colors and some noises for a while. Then I meet a person who I have met several times since sober while I was meditating. All the little elves kind of coalesced into one. It looked like a big face. It had like floppy ears and like a dog face. And he was just hovering in front of me, kind of cackling down at me. And I just looked at, him and I looked at him and I go, oh, Robot Jackal. I don't know if that was his name. It felt right. Supposedly, there are male and female forms of ayahuasca. The female form you get from mixing it from a root in South America. The male version you get from like mixing it with a root in the Middle East. We did the male version. And let me tell you something. Not only did the Robot Jackal have like male energy, he had like daddy energy. Robot Jackal, it's like he started pinning me down. So I'm like now laying on my side on the bed and he had like this like, get the hell down. And I'm like, oh yes sir, whatever you say daddy. And he's like, that's right you little slut, get down. I'm gonna barf love and alien knowledge directly into your soul. So anyway, I'm over in my this corner. I'm having like my interdimensional BDSM scene. My buddy is lying on the couch He's not tripping at all. He drank either too little or he puked too early, but he's just kind of lying on my couch, smoking pot and listening to Bjork. And really, Bjork is just kind of an ayahuasca monster just on her own. What I took away from all this weird experience was, and now it's gonna get a little sad, sorry, but I grew up a trans girl in South Dakota, which is not a good place. I remember thinking growing up, if anyone sees my secret, I'm just dead. They're either gonna straight up kill me or they're going to bully me into suicide. If anyone discovers my secret, it's all over. Because me being happy meant me being a woman. I just learned the idea that it's not safe to be happy ever. So I grew up just, really cynical, really, really bitter, really, really adversarial with life. I would always like bite and snip at people when they tried to get close to me. And I just had this horribly sarcastic outlook on everything just because I didn't believe in anything. But what happened on this trip was, like I said, Daddy Robot Jackal, he kind of forced me, literally forced me, 
into a vulnerable position. He showed me that like, it was safe to do that. Not only was it safe to do that, it was good to do that. Because here is this big interdimensional cosmic thing and he loves me and he wants to look out for me. And that's when I realized like, okay, life isn't just this horrible hostile thing. There are forces out there that want to love me. And what I ultimately took away from this trip was that life really wants to show me love, but I have to let it. Tales from the